the G80 is probably the best micro four thirds camera for the money. And the two main features I want to highlight are the 4K capabilities and IBIS. But overall, I'm surprised by the features of this camera, which you actually can find for around $300 used. Let's start with the specs. The camera features a micro four thirds sensor, therefore having a format of 4x3. It's a 16 megapixel sensor with IBIS up to 5 stops for compensation. There is the possibility of dual IS if the lens has image stabilization built in. It can shoot up to 4K 30 frames per second or 1080 at 50 frames per second. It is super lightweight at 505 grams including the battery and the grip feels nice on the camera. It's a very comfortable camera to carry and honestly this could even be a preferred street photography camera. That's the feel you get with it. There is a focus switch button and plenty of customizable buttons as well. It only has one SD card so if you want to double stack your shooting where two SSD cards record at the same time that would not be possible with this camera. Honestly I think autofocus is decent. I thought it was going to be a lot worse because Panasonic is used to having bad autofocus but I mean I think it's a little bit worse than the GH5 and the CG9 but otherwise I think it's workable and I think it works fine for stills. The screen is great and it's made for work and performance in any genre. It's a tilt screen 180 degrees on both sides so essentially you can get 360 degrees angle with this screen. You can also bring it in and still have it tilted and pretty much any type of shot will be visible with the screen and for me this is the preferred screen on any camera. I'm very excited to have this type of screen on this camera. If you are starting out, it might be hard to understand what the difference between all these sensor types are. And honestly, I have a hard time understanding the benefits and cons of different sensors as well. Cause it's not only about sensor size, but it's also about the rendering, IQ, the processor and sensor technology. But the hard rule goes as follows. The larger the sensor, the bigger the pixels, which allows for more light gathering, resulting in better noise performance and higher dynamic range. The Micro Four Thirds system is called the cropped sensor format, meaning in theory it should produce more noise than an equivalent full frame camera would. But to showcase that it's not only the sensor that dictates the light gathering capabilities, we will compare the G80 with the G9. Micro Four Thirds cameras are generally known for not being the best low light performers and I think the DCAG suffers a bit. Here we have a side by side shot with the same lens with the DCG9 and I've used the same settings but just different bit rates. G80 is still usable at 1600 ISO but it starts to fall apart at 3200 ISO whereas the DCG9 still has a somewhat usable image at 3200 ISO. There's also a testament to sensor not always being important. They both have the same sensor but handle light gathering differently. I think the G80 is decent. You can get a lot of use from it so you shouldn't be too worried about it. But still be aware of the limitations. It can shoot up to 4K 30 frames per second and the quality is great. Even though it's only 8-bit, and the colors do fall apart easier, I think the quality is great and for the price I cannot see any cameras competing with it. You can shoot some slow-mo as well at full HD 50 frames per second which is limited but still fine. The IBIS is the best part about all the Panasonic cameras and this one does not disappoint either. When you have gotten accustomed to the in-body image stabilization from Panasonic, it's hard to turn back. That is why I recommend this camera before the GH4. I think you get everything you do with the GH4 but also including the IBIS, which is something that can be tremendously helpful for run and gun situations or just about any other situations as well. If you can find some more room in your budget, then I would recommend the G9. It's pretty much an updated camera on every front. More recording options, high megapixel count, better IBIS, better autofocus, better handling and more buttons. I just wanted to throw it in there or maybe you're looking to upgrade from the G80 then I think the G9 is probably the perfect camera for you. Another alternative to the G80 is the GX9. Both seem to have the same price on the used market and honestly it might even be better. It's not built like a classic DSLR but more like a portable street camera. Maybe some people in the comment can explain to me whether the GX9 is as capable or it might actually even be better. So what lenses can I recommend to pair with the G80? If you want to start out, I definitely recommend the kit lens. It has a variable aperture of 3.5 to 5.6 so it's a bit slow. But it has a focal range of 12 to 60 giving you a long range. And you can usually find these around $100 to $150 used. I think it's a decently sharp for video and photos. 
The form factor is so small and the build quality is decent. It's made out of the plastic, but it still feels solid. The prime lens I can recommend is the 25mm Lumix, which gives you a 50mm full frame equivalency. It's affordable and produces great quality images. Those two lenses would probably be my starting point for a great kit. So there is two shortcomings I think I have to highlight. One is Moir, glitch or aliasing, whatever you call it. This happens when intricate patterns are introduced and you definitely see it on the G80. I was a bit surprised by this, but it is an older camera so maybe that is to be expected. But yeah, again, I was a bit surprised because I usually do not see that on the GH5 or G9. Second is heating. I don't think it overheats, but it definitely gets warmer after shooting a little bit with it, which I was surprised by considering I'm using the GH5 and G9. Again, those are fairly newer cameras, so you cannot really compare those cameras with the G80. But I think I had to mention these two things because if they're important to you, well, then you really should skip this camera and probably seriously consider the GH5 or G9 if you can find some room in the budget. The IBIS and 4K capabilities in this little package is impressive. Pair it with a 1260 kit lens and you are good to go. It's not going to be a low light monster, but that can be ignored when you factor in all the other tools. And I would definitely pick this up way before I pick up a GH4. I think it's just a better camera roll and the experience with IBIS just makes it way more capable and intriguing. Thank you for watching.